Hi, this is Aaron at thinkboutlabs.com and welcome back. Now it's time to start adding enemies for our robot to interact with. I've upgraded this 2D platformer sci-fi game project without any issues from its original version to the current 2017.3.0f3. Okay, so setting up the zombie is pretty close to how we set up our robot. To get started, I've grabbed us some free um, zombie sprite assets from gameart2d.com. So I've added them under our sprites in a new folder called zombies and then we have the male and the female. So let's go ahead and set up our zombie character. In the player section, let's go ahead and right click and add a 2D object sprite. And let's name this zombie. Let's go to the mail folder and let's go to our idle. And we're going to just put an idle in here so we can see where he's at. Okay, sit down a little bit. Let's go ahead and bring him up and over, down a little bit. Let's flip him on his X. Let's add a couple components to him. Let's add a capsule collider. 2D. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him. Don't need it to be all the way around him, so let's uh, reduce the size in the X. Let's move it over in the X a little bit. Great. Let's go ahead and copy this. And let's add a new component. Capsule collider. 2D and then paste this one as values. Okay, so we have two of them on here. One we're gonna use as the actual collider so that the zombie can collide with him. And the second one we're gonna set up as a trigger. That way we can detect if something has collided with him and we can do something based on that trigger. All right, so let's go ahead and set up those animations for the zombie. With the zombie character selected, let's go to the animation tab. If you don't have the animation tab open, go to window, animation, right here. Let's create our first animation click create and let's go into our animations and then under the animations let's create a new folder called zombie and let's go ahead and create one for the mail we're only going to be doing the mail in this tutorial because it's kind of duplicative so the first one let's go call him the idol as soon as we create the idol animation not only is it going to create the idol animation but it's also going to give us an animator component to our zombie there we go. So we see that we have the zombie controller and we have the idle animation that we're that we're in currently. So let's go ahead and grab the idle. Let's move it in here. Set the samples at 15. Select the zombie and let's hit play, see how that looks. Looks a little fast. Let's put that at 10. Let's play it again. Yeah. Looks good. Okay. Let's do the next one, which is attack. New clip. Attack. Same thing. Grab all the attacks. Drag them in here. Let's start with 15 samples. Select the zombie and hit play. That's pretty good. I like that. All right. So the next one is going to be dead. Grab these and put them in here. Set that as 15 as well. Play. Let's slow that down a little bit. Let's put it 10. Alright, so you'll notice that on the dead animations, he's way off the ground. So let's grab him and we'll set record. And on this first one, let's bring it down. There. Let's select the second one. Let's bring him up just a tad. Select the third. Let's bring him down just a little bit. Select the fourth. Down just a little bit. I'm just going to go through all these and make sure that he's just above the ground. Just a tad. So that one looks good. Hands on the floor a little bit. Let's bring it down just a tad. I've got one more. And that one looks good too. So let's stop recording and then let's play it. Much better. Alright, let's go to the next one. And it is going to be walk. 
create idle or create new animation and walk. Let's grab all these out of here and put them in here. Let's go to samples on 15. Select a zombie and hit play. It's kind of a, a run. Let's slow that down a little bit. Play. That looks good. All right, so now that we have the animation set up, let's go to the animator and set up the parameters to control our animation. So the easiest way to do that is go to the animator that is on the zombie and just double click it and it'll open up in the animator. If you don't have the tab open, go to window and then animator right here, open it up as well. All right, so it has already added our four animations in here by default. All right, so let's move these out a little bit. Idle, attack, dead, and walk. So our first one is going to be idle. So if idle isn't your default layer, so you can right click on the idle animation and set it as the layer default state. That's what we want by default. Next, let's set up from idle to walk. Let's go ahead and set a couple transitions to walk and back. And then from walk to attack, set up a couple transitions. Make those go back. And then same thing for attack, idle and idle back to the attack. And for our dead, our dead is going to be triggered on any state, so he can die at any time. He doesn't have to be in one of these animations or transfer from those animations. And it's only going to be one way. Alright, so for the parameters, we're going to set up four parameters, one for each of the animations. So they're all going to be bulls. First one is going to be called is walking. Second one is going to be called is dead. Third one is is attacking. And the last one is idle. So now let's set up the conditions for the an animation conditions based on these parameters. Before we do that, let's go back to our actual animations and we need to make sure that they're all set to loop time except for the dead one. So the attack is set to loop time true, the dead is not to be true, idle is true, and the walk is true. We're doing this because we want the walk, idle, and attack. We want these to continue to play after they've already played once until that animation has changed to a different state. Now with the dead, we only want it to play once. We can't keep on dying and dying and dying again. It's just that one time we're done with it and that's it. So from any state to dead, we're going to say that our conditions is is dead is true. And that's it. It has no exit time. And then from idle to walk, it does not have an exit time. And we're going to say is walking is true. And then from walk back to idle, we're going to set this as is idle true. And then from walk to attack, and it has no exit time. And then from walk to attack, has no exit time. And it's going to be is attacking is true. Attack to walk, no exit time. Is walking is true. And then attack to idle, no exit time. Is idle is true. And then, oops, that was the wrong one. Idle to attack is is attacking true. And then from attack to idle is idle is true. All right, now that we have the state machine set up for the animator, the next part for the zombie is to start writing script for the zombie controller. Let's go ahead and stop here for now, and I'll pick that up in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Till then.